It's MasterChef. If I didn't think I was good enough to win, I wouldn't have entered. Two expert judges to test them at the highest level. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. I want to change my life. I want to be the next master chef. This is one tough competition. I'm a nice guy, but you're going to see somebody who wants to win. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six contestants all want to become the next star restaurant chef. But only one will get through to the quarter final. They face three tough tests. They have to invent a dish from scratch. It's just unpleasant. They have to survive the pressure of working in a professional kitchen. I need those tests, please. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And impress the judges with their own recipes. I would finish that and then probably lick the plate. All in just two days. Welcome to MasterChef. If you really, really want this competition, you're going to have to hold your nerve. 40 minutes. Cook. It's the quick elimination test. Deciding which three stay are judges John Tarode. Which one of these guys is going to make themselves a star? And Greg Wallace. Leave your excuses at the kitchen door. Get in here and cook. The contestants have 40 minutes to invent a dish from any of today's ingredients, including rump steak, flat mushrooms, butternut squash, avocado, pappardelle, blue cheese, passion fruit, and pine nuts. City boy Stuart is so focused when it comes to cooking, he's already planned what he's going to make. What I regard myself as is somebody who's very, very good at following instructions. Stuart, you're a very slow starter. Well, I came with a plan. I was rather hoping you had chicken, but you didn't. You hinged all your hopes on you having chicken? <laughs> That's just <laughs> madness, Stuart. <laughs> Barnsley girl Anna works in construction and isn't afraid of a challenge. In my current position, I'm a project manager and I have a team of between 40 and 50 guys that work for me and it's, it's high pressure and I think I could translate that into being a chef. Do you work with builders? Builders and plumbers, yeah. There's a few blokes in here, do you think you're going to beat them? No problem. 25-year-old Dean from Essex prefers to be home cooking than out with the lads. I'd rather cook a three-course meal than go down the pub and, you know, watch the football. Tell us why you're here. I'm here because I like cooking and I want to just get the opportunity to show my cooking skills and uh, to be recognised. Recognised in...? Recognised as a cook and recognised as in someone that's capable of uh, entertaining. 20 minutes left. With everyone else still frantically cooking, Dean's finished and started to plate up. We've got 15 minutes to go. Marketing strategist Lee's mixed heritage means that she likes to combine food styles. There's a bit of Arabic in there. My dad's Scottish and uh, I grew up in South Africa. What are you cooking for us? I am going to treat the pasta as a little bit of a noodle. How do you turn your pasta into a little bit of a noodle? Basically a pasta dish with a bit of an oriental vibe. Right. <laughs> Railways manager Ben's hoping for a second chance at his cooking dream after missing out when he was younger. When I was younger, I wanted to go to Catering College. Told by a few people that, you know, you probably didn't have the right attitude to sort of cut it in the kitchen. Um, so, regrettably, I kind of followed a different path. What are you cooking for us, Ben? I'm going to do um, some pasta with a mushroom sauce with garlic bread. You confident? Very, very confident. You look like you've got yourself all organised, Stephen. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get you a very good bowl of pasta. If you were at home, I'm guessing that you wouldn't put the butternut, the cheese and the steak all in the pasta. Probably not, but if you like it, 
that's going to be the big difference. But if we don't, you're going home. Chance to take. Civil servant Stephen dreams of leaving behind the day job for a new life in food. My dream is to open a Mediterranean-style cafe on the south coast of England. Four minutes. Get it on the plate. That's it, guys. Time's up. First up is Essex boy Dean. He's made steak and chips with a mushroom sauce, but finished 15 minutes early. Your steak's soft, your chips are crispy on the outside and soft in the middle, and your sauce is deep, flavoursome and creamy. It does taste good, they're classic combinations. You've got to get your timing right though, Dean. Yep. Commercial kitchen, five people in a brigade, you serve up before them, the whole kitchen goes to absolute pieces. Civil servant Stephen's hopes rest on an unusual combination of pasta with steak and butternut squash in a blue cheese sauce. I think the idea of doing pasta with blue cheese sauce is a very, very good one. Um, but it needs to be strong. I think your intentions are good. Despite your pasta being well cooked, your butternut squash being well cooked, and your steak being well cooked, it doesn't come together as a bowl of pasta. You just get the three independent flavours. I think I can cook. Maybe it didn't quite come off, but I was pushing myself today. Has cross cultural cook Lee managed to pull off her Asian beef salad despite using pasta instead of noodles? You can't substitute Asian noodles with pasta, you just can't. It's highly, highly unusual. That you, you can merge two cultures with food, but you've got to have an amazingly brilliant palate. OK. City boy Stuart had hoped to find chicken in the mystery box, but instead he's had to make stir-fried beef and mushrooms with rocket and a lemon vinaigrette. Basically, what we've got is some overfried honey soy beef. I think you've probably had what you might refer to as a bad day at the office. It's just unpleasant. The beef's dry, it's a bit salty. I just wish you actually cooked something you knew how to cook. This is called the invention test. It's not called the cook what you know test. Ambitious construction manager Anna's looking to beat off the competition with her butternut squash and potato soup. It's butternut squash sweet and it has the body. Your soup is definitely well flavoured. Okay. Is a bowl of soup going to get you through to the next round? Yes. Railways manager Ben's catering college hopes are resting on his classic pasta with a mushroom and blue cheese sauce and garlic bread. It needs twice as much blue cheese in there. There ain't enough. <clears throat> you should concentrate on that sauce for your pasta, not on your garlic bread. Yeah. Your pasta is cooked very well. Your sauce is light. You don't need carb upon carb. Ladies and gentlemen, this is judgment time. At the end of this, three of you are going home. Off you go. There was no reason today why they couldn't have got something fantastic out of that. No reason at all. But it was mistakes aplenty. There was nerves in here, and there was a bit of sloppy action going on as well. Lee really wanted to do an Asian noodle dish. Didn't have any noodles, so substitute it for pasta. It just does not work. OK, Lee's out. I like Dean. Dean did me steak, chips and a sauce. It was the best plate of food in the house. He cooked steak and mushroom sauce with chips. Well, I wish everybody else would have done. Anna actually did a decent bowl of soup. You have to admire anybody who walks in this kitchen and says, right, I'm going to make a bowl of soup and that's going to get me through to the next round. Give her a chance. So, at the moment, we're saying that Anna goes through and Dean goes through. Yeah. Stuart, 
What he did today was just wrong. I don't think Stuart had much of an idea. He said, well, I, I wanted a chicken. I, I thought I was going to get a chicken, and, and when I didn't, it's messed me up. Well, that proves that he doesn't do much cooking. So Stuart's out. Now, it's Stephen or Ben, two bowls of pasta. I thought Ben's bowl of pasta was better than Stephen's. You do not serve pasta with bread. But, John, he cooked his pasta, he made a mushroom sauce, he had a finished bowl of food. I'm sorry, Ben is not cooking enough to go through MasterChef. If I look at Stephen, he had conviction. And I think it does show a glimmer of a very good cook. Which one of these guys goes through? I've got a fair idea who could do it. Three of you are going home. Anna, you get to cook tomorrow. Well done. Stuart, Lee, sorry guys, you're leaving us. Thank you very much. Dean, well done, you get to cook tomorrow. Thank you. Ben or Stephen? Congratulations, Stephen. Well done. Sorry, Ben. Well done. I cannot believe I got through that stage. I didn't perform as I could have done, but I got through. I hope I can step it up now. Looking forward to it tomorrow. A little bit apprehensive, but you know we'll we'll see how it goes. But I'm going to give it my best shot. But I didn't get this far just to go home tomorrow. So hopefully I'm staying and uh, yeah, go all the way. For the moment, they can relax. But tomorrow, the pressure's on as they face two more daunting tests. It's early morning on day two, and the contestants arrive at Mosaico, a high-end Italian restaurant in London's upmarket Mayfair. Head chef Matteo Mistrarigo is passionate about food from his native Italy. With over 70 covers for lunch, he expects his high standards to be maintained. As the orders flood in, Essex boy Dean is immediately tested with high demand for his dish of sautéed prawns with broad beans and grilled ricotta cheese. He was pulled up on his timing yesterday, and it's not long before he makes another mistake. No, too much salt, then. He's oversalted his food. As a result, it's inedible. Sorry, sir. To follow one risotto. How long for the risotto, Anne? About two minutes, chef. After a great first round, Barnsley girl Anna is confident of mastering her complex dish, risotto with a mixed seafood ragu. But she's struggling to get the right proportions. Thank you. I need a more uh, seafood ragu, Anna. They pay 13 quid for that, eh? Yeah, chef. And yeah. I doesn't want to rip them off, please, yeah? Chef. Thank you. Steve, start to put the steak on, please. Oh, you, Chef, three. With orders flying in, the heat is on for civil servant Stephen at the grill, making sirloin steak with a broccoli and olive sauce. It's four minutes, Chef. Yeah. The most difficult part of this is just getting it all prepared at the right time on the plate when Chef wants it. Steve, yes, I'm ready. the steak? If you need help, tell me. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. There we go. Come on. Now, straight away, you need to put five on there. there. Yes, Chef. For Stephen, the heat of the kitchen is testing him to the limit, and it's about to get tougher. It's every chef's worst nightmare. Yeah. Devil 20 is the boss, yes. the owner. Okay. Steve, the boss this one is, eh? It's two steaks, one with no olives, medium rare, yeah? Medium rare, no yeah. olives. Okay, he's the boss, yeah? No mess? Yes, yes, Let's chef. Go. The restaurant owner is in and has ordered one of Stephen's dishes. Well, I'm cooking for the boss and I am nervous. Yeah. I really am. Don't burn any yeah. please. I think it's a bit too much oil on the grill. Trips down and causes flame, causes flame to come up, burn the meat. 
Steve, I need those decks, please. Chef, 30 seconds. There's one chef. That's the first one. Give me the other one, please. As Stephen plates up, chef spots a problem. The owner's special request of no olives has been forgotten, and the dish must be redone. You give me the same sauce, innit? Ah, uh, chef, sorry, yeah. This one tastes olives, ma'am. If he doesn't want olives, please, plate yes, it chef. up again, please. Yes, chef. The restaurant's full, the owner's finally satisfied. Very good. And the orders are still flooding in. Course on the way. Gank you do it. Dean is in his element, having mastered his dish. I've never experienced anything like this before, but I would love to do it again. It's absolutely fantastic. We've got four minutes, chef. We're yeah. off. Anna is also overcoming her shaky start and beginning to produce restaurant standard food. That's it. Good stuff. Thank you. It's a bit of a novelty to be told what to do for a change. I'm enjoying it. But even as service draws to a close, Stephen's still struggling to cope. It's a bit too much, eh? Yes, yeah, sure. Don't burn it like that unless it's taking the bitter in the mouth, eh? Yes. Matteo, thank you very much. Did they cause havoc in your kitchen? Not much. Now, yesterday, we thought Dean was going to have a problem with his timing. After the first of two plates, I understand the organisation. After that, it was very good. Tell me about Anna. Yes, she did OK. What about Stephen? For me, he was feeling too much the pressure. He did a little mistakes uh, with my boss. They said, Steve, please, no. For your boss? Yeah. Right, here's the question. Who's the best cook? The best cook is Dean. Now they're straight back to MasterChef HQ to cook their best two-course meal. Yesterday, Essex boy Dean impressed the judges with his simple steak and chips and fared well in the pro kitchen. Civil servant Stephen struggled with the pressure of the invention test and the restaurant service. Now he must regain his composure to secure a place in the quarter-final. Construction manager Anna's classic cuisine got the judges' vote. But after being outshone by Dean in the pro kitchen, she's got it all to prove in the final test. Now, the stakes go up. You cook your food. Let's cook. They have an hour to cook a two-course meal of their own design. Only one will win a place in the quarter-final. Okay, Dean. Yeah, I'm fine. What are you going to cook for us? Lemon salve chevet with fillet of lamb uh, covered in a herb crust, and I'm going to cover that in puff pastry. What part of this do you worry about? That the lamb's just right. Get the pastry nice and brown, and obviously keep the lamb nice and uh, fresh inside. Are you confident about winning today? After this morning, yes. Dean, thank you. It's almost there, and it could be almost beautiful, but unless it's cooked perfectly, it's just going to be really, really boring. Stephen, what lesson do you think you've learned today? I, I've learned what it takes to work in a pro kitchen, and it is a professional atmosphere. Simple as that. And what is this dish? I've got some crab cakes for you with some tomato salsa, and then a skate wing with some sautéed potatoes. You haven't got a lot of time left. Your potatoes. The skate is yeah. The potatoes are going to need to be done, and time's becoming a pressure now. Good on you, Stephen. Thanks very much. Thank you. Bravo, Stephen. Crab cakes and a nice big skate wing with a brown butter sauce. Fantastic. Just get it right, mate. You could be on your way to record that. 20 minutes left. Anna, lots of Asian ingredients on your bench. Yeah. It's um, haddock baked in a bag with mussels with a light Thai broth. Ooh, right. And, and that's, that's one course. Yeah, and then I'm um, doing um, coconut milk and lemongrass rice pudding with a mango cooler. You've been confident? Yeah, fairly confident, yeah. You've seen these guys cook now. Mm -hmm. What's the competition like, do you think? It's very stiff, stiff competition, definitely. Thai broth and mussels, there's lots of strong flavours in there. It's going to have to be subtle yet strong. And then we've got coconut milk rice pudding with Alphonse mango. John, this is great. <laughs> Thank you.
Three minutes left. is up. Dean has made lemon sole ceviche and to follow, herb crusted fillet of lamb with asparagus. All right, well, it actually looks nice. It looks light, it looks summery. You don't get the sole till the very, very end. It's because sole's so delicate and the vinegar you've had it in is so sharp and so powerful. That's my only criticism. The star should be that sole. I think it's a very brave thing to do, but it ain't set my belly on fire. The starter's gone. We bring the main in. Now, that lamb is not cooked enough. That's not rare, that's bordering raw. What is nice is that herby crust. There is no place in there for the snap of that asparagus. The flavours are really good, really lovely. Timing, difficult. You've, you've experimented today. I applaud you for it. I don't think you've done a bad job. Will Anna's confidence be justified by her parcel-baked haddock and mussels in a Thai broth and coconut rice pudding with mango coolie? It's a bit big and untidy. That's the jumble sale of dishes. I'm not happy with the broth on the fish dish. OK. For some reason, your broth is very bitter. I don't know what you did. Well, that's why I'm not happy with it, cos it is bitter. Your lime juice is cooked. It goes bitter. Put it in right the last minute. Let's move on from main course to dessert. I like the flavour of the mango, I like the flavour of the coconut, I like the smell of the rice. It shows some real skill. For me, it just needs some sugar and it'll be bloody great. How attractive is that? <laughs> Give <in> the sweet <laughs> shop. <laughs> it's dreamy, soft, milky, creamy rice pudding and that beautiful mango comes bursting through. There's no real sweetness in there until you get down to wafer. You are so close to a gorgeous, gorgeous dish. Ooh. You really care about this competition. Yeah, really, really matters, yeah. I'm not in a position where I can stop what I do now and start again and retrain, but this is, I feel this is like a fast track promotion, if you like. If I'm good enough to do all this, it, it gives me the confidence to take it forward and do something about it. Can Stephen prove at last that he has culinary skill with crab cakes and tomato salsa followed by skate wing in a black butter sauce and sauté potatoes. Whoa, absolutely bursting, bursting with crab flavours. A little bit of chilli heat coming in there. Thanks. I like that. I would finish that and then probably lick the plate. Crispy, texture's good, fantastic. Thank you. That is the way food should be. Let's bring in your main. I love skate. I'm not sure I like it. Covered in a load of vegetation. The black butter went wrong. I took some of the veg that I used and, and just tried to create a better looking dish. All right. You've overcooked the fish. Uh, it's no longer soft. Your potato's cooked. The, that dish is going horribly wrong quickly. Yeah. I'm so sorry for you. It feels as though, to me, you got your starter done and you're really, really happy. And then your main course started to go awry and it feels like you've sort of lost your enthusiasm. I think what it was, I'd done the crab cakes, I wasn't quite happy with them and my confidence kind of then waned. Tell us about your kitchen experience today. I'll be honest, I, I just underestimated the pressure. I put my hands up, I think it was a bit too much for me today. So are you trying to say that you wouldn't want to go in that environment again? I, I think I'm going to find it a bit too much. Wow. That calls into question your progression through Marship, doesn't it? Of course it does. Are you trying to tell me right now you don't want to go any further in this competition? I don't think I can at the moment. As I am at the moment now, I don't think I can. Right, OK. 
Uh, that's a shame, Stephen. Thanks. You know, you've got to be realistic, haven't you? Yeah, I've loved absolutely every second of it. For Stephen, the high-pressure experience of the professional kitchen has proved too much, and he's decided not to go any further in the competition. The pressure was so far above what I thought it was going to be, it was a shock to the system, it really was. It won't stop me cooking, but I know now what I can and can't do. You know, MasterChef give me that chance. Guys, thank you very much indeed. We've got one quarter-final place only, and we need to make a decision. Today, we have seen what really happens when people get put under pressure. Stephen, you know what? I admire the guy. He's decided he's going to step aside because he cannot cope with the pressure of a commercial kitchen, which is a shame. A shame, actually, because he did show promise. So, that leaves us now with Dean and Anna. I think Anna has got some really, really good ideas. The idea of the mussels and the haddock was a very good idea. And that pudding is so close to being a truly fantastic pudding. But she messed up both plates. I want to go through more than anything I've ever done before in my life, so it's really important to me now. I was inspired by the way that Anna made that parcel, all the bits and pieces going inside it, and having the confidence that the food was going to be cooked at the right time. Good girl. That sauce was very bitter. She did make a few mistakes, but the other exciting thing about Anna is the almond brittle on the side of her dessert. Those little touches make the difference between a good cook and a great cook. What about Dean? Although he made a mistake with his lamb not being cooked, the way he presented it makes me think the guy can actually cook. Dean did have a very, very strong kitchen round. You know, the chef said he's by far the best guy in there. It means so much to me. I'd be really disappointed if I didn't get through, but it's my own fault. We have had a really emotional afternoon and now we have to decide one of these to go through. It's just so, so close. Who's it going to be? Not easy, this. Well, this is the first time this has happened. It has been a very emotional day. Still, we have made a decision. Our quarter-finalist... ..is Anna. Congratulations. Anna's a fantastic cook. I'm sure she'll do well in a competition and I uh, hope she goes on to win it. Blown away. I'm really blown away by this. I'm really, really proud of myself. I've got the fire in my belly and I want to take it all the way now. Anna will be back for the quarter-final, where she'll face three other exceptional cooks. 